Hey everybody, Mark Patterson. I want to take a moment to talk to you about kayak fishing in rivers. Uh, today is the first day here in Greensboro that it's been sunny and has not actually rained at some point so far in about 15 days. No kidding. It's ridiculous. I have frogs living in my backyard now. It's, it's amazing. So anyway, uh, in August, a lot of people, myself included, want to go up to the mountains, get out of the heat, and fish in cool mountain water and catch smallmouth, maybe musky if we're lucky, mainly smallmouth. But uh, river fishing presents some unique and dangerous, potentially dangerous fishing situations. Obviously, right now the rivers are flooded. I won't be going this week. Uh, I'm not a whitewater kayaker, and uh, fishing kayaks are not very uh, conducive to whitewater action anyway. Once the water starts to drop, however, I will go up there, and hopefully uh, a lot of you guys will too. It's, it's really fun. It's a beautiful environment. You get to see things and experience things up in the a river mountain environment that's as unique as the coast but that's not the point the point is you have to really really pay attention up there you're constantly moving it's very easy for someone like myself who does a lot of river fishing I mean I'm sorry a lot of pond and lake fishing uh, to look down start tying stuff and not realize how much we're moving so a couple of tips uh, several tips hopefully they're gonna keep you safer number one most important tip Check the weather right before you launch. Everybody now has smartphones. I'm sorry. Everybody's got smartphones. Check that weather. Check that radar. Put the radar in motion. See if that storm's coming. Because unlike uh, pond and lake fishing, once you launch, you're not going to probably be able to get back to where you started. You're going to have to complete the float to your pickup site, your shuttle site. So if you get midway down and you get caught in a violent thunderstorm, you're just stuck. So check your check your radar, check your weather, pick a good day. If you drive all the way up there and the weather looks bad, wait it out. Uh, safety number one. So check the weather. Number two, be aware of the speed and the pressure that that water can create. Uh, it can be, again, it can be easy to want to turn around, go back up and try to fish this eddy or that eddy. Just make sure you, you pay attention. You always go with someone. Uh, I'll throw that in there too. That way if you do get in a dangerous situation or if you get out of your boat, I know one time years and years ago we got out for lunch, uh, I pulled off, tied my kayak off to a tree branch, started eating lunch, heard a loud crack and I tied off to a dead branch and my kayak's going down the river. If it wouldn't have been for other guys being able to go get my kayak, that would have been a long walk for me. That would have been a bad day. Instead, it was just, hey, Mark's an idiot and uh, wasn't paying attention. So, uh, always go with someone. Bring a first aid kit. Uh, you should do that anyway on the water, but bring a first aid kit in case you get cut. Uh, you get a sprain or something like that. So, you can get yourself taped up. Super glue, duct tape will take care of 95% of any problems. It's going to hurt at the end taking them off, but it'll stop you bleeding and get you back to the takeout. So, super glue, duct tape, make sure you have those. Make sure you file a float plan with someone. They know where you're going, where you're going to be picked up, and when you're supposed to be out of the water. Make sure you have a reliable shuttle pickup. Make sure you talk to that individual the morning of, not the night before. Uh, send them a text. Send them a message. Send them something to weigh down. You don't know the person picking you up. If you don't go ahead and drop cars, if you have someone picking you up, that person could have got a kidney stone last night. It happened to me and they not, they're not there to pick you up. Uh, they could have had a car breakdown, they could have had a car wreck. Make sure you have uh, someone you know is reliable and is reminded and ready to pick you up. So, um, number one, make sure you have a good float plan. Make sure you have your PFD on. Make sure you have safety items in there. Make sure you check the weather. Make sure you have a good pickup plan. Um, should you go in the water, and I know this is really kind of a weird thing to, to say, but should you go in the water and, and you can't, and you feel like you can't touch the bottom or it's pretty deep, try to ball up. Uh, if you look at safety classes and stuff, you don't want your feet really in the bottom down there as much as you can if you're moving, if you're floating along, because your foot could get trapped, wedged under a rock. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff happens. Again, you're in a river environment. 
It's fast, powerful moving water. I'm not trying to discourage anyone, or frighten anyone, or make anyone not go. I'm just trying to make people aware. Accidents can happen, accidents are going to happen. But um, if you follow some safety precautions and try to be prepared, uh, an accident doesn't become a tragedy. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So um, that's just what I wanted to say. I want to keep all my friends and members and family safe. And uh, go out there, have a great trip, post up your smallmouth videos. It's that time of year, as soon as this water drops, we're going to be up there enjoying that cool mountain air, cool mountain water. Oh, take more water than you think you need to. A lot of times those floats, uh, you look on the map and you're like six miles, that's not going to take me that long. Well, if it's low water and you have to drag the kayak, or if you got someone that's you know, not a good, as good a paddler, they tire easy, you have to take more breaks. Um, Plan an extra hour longer than you think. The, my figuring is it's about an hour and 15 minutes per mile if you're fishing. So if it's six miles, uh, that's about eight hours. That's about the way we figure it. Because you don't want to rush through there. You're going to have to stop and break lunch. Um, it, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes a mile is normally a pretty safe. If you finish up early, you can always paddle back up river and fish until your shuttle comes. Um, and you keep an eye on your watch so that if you've got an hour to go and you don't even, you're not even remotely close, you can just paddle so the person picking you up doesn't have to wait. You want to be respectful for them too. So always tip your shuttle driver. They appreciate it. And uh, have fun. Be safe. See you on the water. NCKFA.com, NCKFAOIC, Instagram. Thanks so much.